Hi, I'm Vin with Boris FX, and in this quick tutorial, I'm going to use the Shatter Deformer in BCC 3D Objects inside of Vegas Pro to recreate this explosive animation. Now, that's pretty cool. Now, BCC 3D Objects offers a ton of versatility, and I highly encourage you to experiment with different deformers to create unique effects. But for this tutorial, we'll just focus on extruded spline, extruded text, and a shatter. All right, so here we are inside of Vegas Pro, and the first thing that I want to do is recreate my background image. To do so, I'm going to use the LT Gallery 4 image file that is installed with BCC10 and is located in the C, Program Files, Boris Effects, Grunge Texture folder. I'm going to take that file and drop it right into a new video track. Alright, it looks cool, but I want to tweak it a little bit. So I'm going to go to my Video Effects tab and select BCC Fast Lens Blur, and I'm going to drop that right onto the image file. Now the only thing that I want to do here is set the iris scale to 19. Once that's done, I can go back to my FX tab and select BCC Fast Film Process, drop that on, and set the preset to Faded Color Film. Now we're going to go right back again to that Video Effects tab, and we're going to select BCC Vignette. I want to restrict the image to this central area, but I don't want to completely get rid of the texture along each of the sides. So to do that, I'm going to set my style to Color and Blur, my Radius to 18, Squareness to 8, just to give it a little more of a defined edge, and then I'm going to set my Smooth Softness to 75. Lastly, I want to add another instance of Fast Film Process to this image. I'm going to set the preset to Color Push, and then go down to Mix Original. This will allow me to blend this preset with the other effects on this clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to 35, which will bring out some of the other effects that are below it. Okay, next thing I want to do is create this stone ring. Now to do that, I'm going to go to my media generator and drop any one of those onto a new video track. It doesn't matter which one, so long as it's positioned directly above my background track. With that in place, I'm going to go back to my Video Effects tab and select BCC Extruded Spline and drop that right onto the generator. Alright, so what I want to do is I want to create a ring, and to do that, I'm going to set my path type to Circle and enable 3D Stroke. Now this is going to convert the circle into the ring shape that I want, but I'm going to increase the stroke width a bit to 18.4 just to give it a little bit more definition. Once I have it the way I want, I want to start working on that texturing. So I'm going to go down to the Material section and select the preset Stone Rough Stone. This looks good, but presets are a starting point, so let's customize this a bit more. I'm going to change the texture file to Stone Swirly Gray Marble. Now with 3D objects, I have the ability to set a bump map for more realistic texturing. So let's set that front bump file to Stone Deep Cave. Lastly, I want to go to the Transform tab and set my master scale to 177. Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. Now let's get some animation going on. To do that, I want to go to my built-in camera. I want to set animation keyframes on the very first frame for both my orbit radius and my orbit spin. Then I want to jump ahead 3 seconds and set my orbit radius to 0.5 and my orbit spin to 50. If I play my animation back, we're definitely getting close, but there's one more thing I need to do to get this where it needs to be. I'm going to come down here and enable Shatter, which as its name implies will break my ring up into tiny pieces. Now there are a lot of parameters here, but with a few minor tweaks we can get something really nice. The first thing that I want to do is decrease my crackability to 30. This is going to cause the image to break into larger and more irregular chunks. I want to set my explosion force to 4 and my gravity to negative 1. This is going to keep those chunks from flying away too fast and give it more of a crumbly effect. Since the gravity is negative, all those pieces are going to float around in space a bit. Next, I'm going to set my scatter wipe to left-right and my wipe time to 2.34. This is going to cause all that crumbling to move across the image instead of breaking it up all at once. You can always feel free to experiment with the various parameters and angles to create some really interesting effects. Now when done, I tend to finish this effect off by adding BCC Drop Shadow to the clip, but that is entirely up to you if you'd like to add it. So to create my text layer, I'm going to add a second generator to a new video track. We can't add the effect to the first generator because it will override the extruded spline effect. With a new generator positioned on the track above our background and spline tracks, I'm going to drop BCC Extruded Text right onto that clip. When my text window pops up, I can enter anything I want, and in this case, I'm going to type Shatter and then hit Apply. Now here's the great thing. When we look at the original effect, the text and the ring share the same texture and camera motion, so a lot of my settings are going to be exactly identical to what I just did. To recap, I'm going to set my material preset to Stone Rough Stone, the texture file to Stone Swirly Gray Marble, the front bump file to Stone Deep Cave. Feel free to customize any of these settings if you want to get the text looking different from what I have here. Now since font size depends on what we set in the text window, the master scale, which is located in the Transform tab, might have a different value for you. In my case, I'm going to set that to 69. Once that's done, I want to animate the text to match the camera rotation of my ring. 
So in the built-in camera tab, I'm once again going to set an animation keyframe at the very first frame for my orbit radius and orbit spin. I'm going to move forward three seconds or to wherever I place the end animation on my ring and set my orbit radius to 0.5 and my orbit spin to plus 50. When that's done, once again I'll enable shatter and input the same parameters from my spline track. Crackability should go to 30, gravity to negative 1, scatter wipe left to right, and wipe time to 2.34. Now you'll notice that I skipped over explosion force. This is because I want to set it to look a little different from my ring. I want my text to explode with more intensity than that ring, which is just crumbling. To get this look, I'm going to set my explosion force to 42, which is much higher than what I used on that ring. And once again, feel free to add BCC drop shadow to the layer if you want. All right, so we have our 3D objects, our background, our shatter effect, but there's one final thing that we need to do to finish off this effect and make it look a bit more cinematic. I'm going to create a new video track, but don't worry about adding any clips to it. I'm going to go to my Video Effects tab and drop Fast Film Glow directly onto my empty video track. What I want to do is get this track to function like an adjustment layer in After Effect. But the first thing you'll notice is that this doesn't appear to do anything when I apply an effect. In order for this track to function the way we want it to, I need to grab this composite widget and drag it all the way to the left. Once I do that, my effects will now composite over every track below them. All right, now that that's set up, I'm going to select my film glow and change the preset to hot flash warm. I'm going to set my glow radius to 30 and my glow threshold to 69. Next, I'm going to add BCC film damage. Now, there are a ton of different damage looks that you can create here, but for my purposes, I'm just going to select the preset 1970 Super 8 Color. It's going to give it a really nice 1970s era film stock texture. Lastly, I'm just going to blur this a bit by dropping BCC Pyramid Blur onto the clip and setting the blur to 1. Once that's done, just render out the whole thing to a new track and enjoy. One optional thing you can do to really make this effect pop is to select the Render tab in the Spline and Text Tracks. In each of them, set the Polygon Count to 80, Anti-Aliasing to Best, and then turn on Motion Blur. Now given how many particles and chunks of stone are flying around in this video, it's going to significantly increase your render time when you enable these, but your final output will look fantastic. As I said when we began, definitely take the time to experiment with various deformers and settings here to really explore everything BCC 3D objects have to offer you. But in the end, that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris Effects, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care!